Niflheim. Not sure why anyone would want to come here, but here we are. It smells bad. What is that stuff? Weird. Yes. A strange material. <sighs> what is this stuff? This mist is cursed. Cursed? Quite right. Safe to breathe for a time, but it'll kill if we linger. Just one more reason to love Niflheim. Here. Boy. Yes, sir. Let's see. Fancy seeing you two here. I'm surprised you're here, Sindri. This mist is pretty gross. You think I can't handle a little cursed mist? Well, you're right. I'm trying to build some armor that will lessen its effects. The materials I need are all right here in Evaldi's workshop, but they're blanketed by this nauseating mist, of course. Wait for it. The last known location for such armor is in the workshop center chamber. The entrance is sealed, but I could craft you an entry stone with enough mist echoes. There it is. I wouldn't recommend staying in the mist for too long. That stench will stick to your hair, your weapons, your armor. And I will not touch your gear until you burn all the tiny beasties off in the fires of Muspelheim. Also, it will kill you. I'm feeling creative today. I suppose you prefer my brother's work? <laughs> You're wrong, of course. There's something written here. This whole place shuffles around each time we leave? That's incredible! Atreus, focus. This is a dangerous place. That's dwarven creativity for you. Impressive and dangerous.
Be the center chamber. Looks like you found enough echoes, and you're not dead. Very impressive. Sindri, how do you make anything out of mist? Odd as it sounds, the dwarves who lived here could craft marvels out of the mists of Niflheim. Keep an eye out for more mist echoes. I could put them to all sorts of use. Don't let the Draugr get you! Dinner up here. That's nice. Is that the armor? It looks kind of run down. Can you wear it? No. It is too small and too old. We will bring it back to the dwarf.
Brother, you're fading fast.
do it. Don't buy anything on mine. Is that what I think it is? Useless armor? Useless? Oh, ye of little faith, this armor was worn by Ivaldi himself. Sure, it's seen better days, but I can restore it with more mist echoes. And it'll help with the effects of Ivaldi's curse. Unless there is something of value in this workshop, there is little point in staying here. You saw all the chests in the center chamber, yes? Plus all the goodies tucked away towards the back of the workshop? And the three round tears, of course, but might want to be careful with those. Why's that? It's a literal tear in the fabric of reality itself. You want to reach your hand through there? Be my guest. What can I do for you two? Okay, um, come back when you need something, I guess.
more time!
Seriously, be careful with those realm tears. Putzing around Nippelheim, have we? How can you tell? I'd recognize if all these stench of failure anywhere. Plus, you still got some mist on your shoes. Okay, what's good? Keep on from catching bits off you. Guess that worked out. Supposedly the realm tears contain some kind of terrible secret if Valdi wanted hidden. But who knows really, dwarves are strange. And yes, I realize I'm a dwarf. Oh! 
Need a fresh upgrade before tackling the Realm Tears? Not that I condone such an action, mind you. I think that's a keeper. Happy to provide.
I can do whatever you need. Oh, nothing. Okay. So what brings you around, friends? Sometimes the best purchase is the one we don't make. If you're thinking about hurling us all into the void, I hope you're quite sure. Wasn't it your idea? Find our own path, right? Bollocks. This is where Tyr stepped beyond, and the Unity Stone protected him. Ready? Ready. Well, if this is it, lads, it's been an honor. Our faith head. Oh, how 
can I be so nauseous without a stomach? Come on, that was great. Look. The tower. I knew there was something down here. Amazing. How do you hide something that exists in all realms? Cast it out of any realm to the space between. Clever old tear. Is Jotunheim on the other side? Can't be that. It's not like you go through Vanaheim to reach the Midgard Peak. But how do we use it? I'd suggest we look inside, but stay alert. Tyr's little challenges are never as simple as they appear. I have noticed. This is sparse. The pedestal. Oh no! It took the stone! The tower. It's absorbing the stone's energy. Something's happening! Is it moving? It's moving! It knows what to do. The stone served its purpose. We're fulfilling Tyr's spell. What happens now? No idea, brother. But after that fall, I'm sure we're past the worst of it. Oh, no, this is considerably worse.
I do not know. Oh no! We're back in hell? Oh dear, here they come. Focus up! Where are we? Now Tyr's travel room can take us to Jotunheim. How did Tyr do this? Odin suspected the giant secretly possessed some remnant of primordial Jotnar creative essence. The stuff all realms are made of. The Unity Stone must have been fashioned from that essence. To trust an outsider with it, even Tyr, tells you just how desperate they were. And look! 
Now we can finally light all the braziers and see what happens. Another name. Going to. Someone who loved the Valkyries enough to do this? I wonder. Perhaps the Queen? Take a wrong turn, brother. Realm travel room's back up top. We might have less many stuff we want to do before we leave. Who knows how long we'll be gone. Fair enough. Full of stories. When will you tell one that entertains? I beg your pardon? You just insulted you. Yeah, I got that. So you want a corker, do you? Very well, my brothers. I'll tell you the story of Runia, the brawler. The real story. There was a huge battle, right? His shrine had him in the middle, fighting off Ace. A pretty story, but no. Rungnir, you see, was born with neither head nor heart, so the giants had to complete him with stone. He was strong, to be sure, but also a perfect simpleton. Odin met him wandering in Midgard one day, found him so amusing, so harmless, so gullible, that he invites him back to his palace in Asgard. There he gives Rungnir his fill of mead, and goads him into all manner of boasts and antics, all for the amusement of the court. I was there. I saw the Aesir laugh as Hrungnir leapt upon his shield and swore he'd kill us all and take our womenfolk back to Jotunheim. Then Thor shows up. And does he laugh? Oh no. Thor takes one look at the drunken stone buffoon and brings down Mjolnir on his head so hard that he's got chunks of Hrungnir in his own skull to this day. Thor is so startled by the face full of rock he doesn't notice Rhaenyra's body topple right onto him with a sickening crunch. And again, the roars of laughter echo through the palace halls. That's an awful story, Mimir. Nothing like the one's mother told me. Let that be a lesson, my son. Truth is seldom so pretty as myth and legend. Another name. Hilder! Why the arcane runes? Perhaps we're meant to find something in Muspelheim and Niflheim.
That dragon, that's Baldur's, isn't it? Yes. And you brought it down, to save me? It was very heroic. Another name. Gunnar! I have a question. If Ymir was the first giant, where did he come from? In the beginning, there was Ganungagop, the great void. There were no realms yet, only primordial forces. There was fire, and there was ice, and there in the void they met and produced... Water? More than water. The mystic lifeblood of something entirely new. From this water, Ymir took form and became a being of pure creation and chaos, mother and father to all that came after. Even the Aesir? Aye. Every god, man and beast came first from Ymir's flesh. Though it was the Aesir who thought themselves so superior that they should hold dominion over the rest of creation. It was Odin who took arms against his creator and spilled Ymir's lifeblood with his spear. A necessary evil, he would say, to bring order to the realms. From Ymir's torn flesh, Odin would fashion the realm of Midgard for his own. Called himself All-Father as if he was the creator and not the creator's destroyer. A small, covetous tyrant. Ymir? Huh? Oh, sorry, my boy. Ah, uh, you know, I think it best we just end it there, actually.
Sorry, the Unity Stone, didn't it? I wanted to fly again. Yes, that's a terrible pity. Another name. Ulra. If I'm not mistaken, we've yet to discuss the tale of the giant Bergelmir. Oh yeah, I remember his run. He looked happier than the other ones, mostly. It begins in an ocean of blood. Finally, a story worth hearing. If you remember, Ymir, the first giant, was fatally stabbed by Odin. It's in his blood our story starts. Ymir's magical guts poured out in a torrent so violent it threatened to flood all of creation. The Jotnar were unprepared, as the very last of them were washed away in the endless tide. Not just Ymir, but all of giant kind faced extinction. And so would Odin's victory have been complete. But Ymir's kind did not all perish that day. Staying afloat in the hollowed husk of a tree, the frost giant Bergomir endured, as did his lady wife. For weeks they sailed, until finally they came upon a new land. They called it Jotunheim. And there they would start anew. As father and mother they would multiply exceedingly, and as king and queen they worked to make Jotunheim a land where giants would know no master but themselves. Bergomir never sought revenge for Odin's slaughter. His vengeance was to live and prosper. He died at peace, a legion of his kin to mourn him. He would ever be known as Bergelmir the Beloved. Bergelmir the Beloved. Huh. I've never heard a story end that way. Not a true one, anyway. If you do, laddie.